Hey guys, this is my new Sunco 709 AD spot welder. Finally got the 110 volt unit returned on eBay. And then the problem I had was that nobody on eBay will sell the 230 volt unit if you live in the US. So I ended up buying this unit from AliExpress. It was like 230 or $235 shipped. It's exactly the same as the 110 volt unit. So when I bought it, it came with this uh, funny looking plug. I guess this is what's used in Europe. Um, but basically I snipped off this plug and I got some of this 12 gauge three strand cable along with this new plug. This is the US version of the 230 volt plug. I just went with this one because this is the type socket I already had installed in my home. I don't know what gauge wire this is, but it's gotta be like 14 or or 16 it's it's really really thin so hopefully there's less loss in this cable and it's actually it's also longer I think that's about 20 feet just because in the US we don't have many 230 volt outlets so on the back you'll see this is indeed it says 220 volts um, interestingly it says it's rated for 15 amps which is the same as the 110 volt unit was rated for and for anyone who knows how electricity works you take the volts times the amps to get the watts um, so this one should theoretically pull twice the amount of watts as a 110 volt unit based on this rating alone, even though the output current was the same. So that tells you there's definitely something fishy going on with the 110 volt unit. All they did was slap a new label on that said a lower voltage with the same amount of amps. Chinese product, what more do you expect? So yeah, I just snipped off the old cord. I got electrical tape on there for insulation. Um, I kept the same fuse. And then I did add a second fuse on the inside for the other leg because the way 230 volts works in the US, there is no neutral in this plug. Um, both of these blades are hot. So both of these, either one of these blades to ground will measure 110 volts. And then uh, measure this blade to this blade, you'll get 220 volts. There is no neutral in this plug. So you do need to make sure you fuse both legs coming in because this fuse alone will only protect one of the two legs. Right, so I'm not going to go into too much detail over how to use a spot welder. Um, there's already enough videos out there of people doing that. After putting out the previous video explaining how terrible the 110 volt unit was, I just wanted to show the differences between the 110 and the 230 volt unit. If you haven't seen the 110 volt unit yet, I definitely recommend you go back and watch that video um, so you'll see what I'm talking about. But basically I have this knob here set on about seven and a quarter. It's not even turned the whole way up. And I'm going to put it on 8 and 4 is what I've been doing. So that's a pulse of 12. This is 0 0.15 millimeter nickel strip. Um, I bought this from Keith's store. There's a lot of people selling uh, nickel strip on AliExpress. And while it might be a few dollars cheaper, there's a lot of people selling nickel strip that's not really nickel strip. It's like steel or it's nickel coated steel. Keith got this from a reputable source and he personally tested it for me and ensured that it was nickel. It didn't rust or anything like that. So anyway, that aside, so you wanna hold the, the pen at about a, a 45 degree angle like this and don't really apply too much pressure because the way the welding works is the, the current that runs through these two pins creates heat which melts both layers of metal. So if you press too hard, you're gonna end up with good conductivity, no heat's gonna be generated and no welding's gonna take place. So I'm just setting it down at a 45 degree angle, lightly resting it, just a little bit of pressure. And you'll see it does not pull off. So what I've been doing is I've been putting about two welds on each one. And uh, if it looks like it's loose or sometimes like that one you saw a little bit of smoke, it kind of burnt through the nickel a little bit. That just means the nickel wasn't perfectly flat on the cell itself. There's a little bit of space. Um, so you'll want to push a little firmly to make sure it's seated flat and then let it rest. And that's definitely not coming off. It's starting to a little bit, but that's because it's tearing. It's actually tearing the nickel strip. Uh, where it's welded. So I'll do the next cell. Again, not coming off. The third cell, not coming off. I can probably actually turn these settings down quite a bit. I don't know if I try just eight. The pulse of eight might be better. So if you look here, you can you can see the difference. The you know there's kind of a little bit of black here. There's a little bit of black there where it burnt through the nickel. Um, and the pulse of eight, you can see the indents, but they're not as black and as charred. So if I take the pliers and pull on that, even the pulse of eight doesn't come out. So I can probably use a much lower pulse than what I'm using. But you get the point. It, it works much better than the than the 110 volt unit did. Uh, the positive side's the same way. 
So we got two in that cell. Doesn't come off. Let's go through them all. And you'll see how quickly, how quickly that was to do these four cells. No soldering whatsoever. The cells do get a little bit warm from the spot welder, but it, it's not the same heat as soldering. You're not heating up the cell itself. So we turn it the whole way up. Now I have it on a current of eight and a pulse of 16. And you can tell there's definitely a lot more current flowing through than there was with the 110 volt unit. The wand is a little bit different. This one doesn't spread apart like this, like the other one did. Um, but the design is exactly the same, the electrodes are exactly the same, and this cabling is exactly the same. Um, all of my batteries will be soldered, will be spot welded going forward. I will not be soldering any more batteries. I've already done several thousand spot welds on my new packs. If you haven't seen my, my video yet of my 300p packs, my 600 cell modules, definitely check that out as well. But uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to show you is I just wanted to show you that this works and if you're considering getting one, Make sure you get the 230 volt version even if you're in a country with 110 volts. As far as the plug changing goes, that's up to you to figure out. I would not advise messing with that unless you know what you're doing because 230 volts is extremely dangerous and can be fatal. You can weld a pack very, very quickly. The only problem is that this pen, after about, uh, I don't know, I'd say after about 100 welds or so, I can already feel it's starting to get warm. Um, this pen gets so hot you can't use it anymore and you need to let it sit to cool off. You can see I've got a piece of cotton swab just shoved in there. Um, and that's because I've been using this so much, this plastic sauce actually started to melt. Uh, these electrodes are loose. I'm thinking of fixing that permanently with some thermal epoxy, most likely something that's designed to extend heat. They'll just keep these held in place. The other thing somebody recommended was just to get a second, uh, one of these pens, which I'll probably do. And then either some kind of junction down here, or I can just pull these out and put the new pen in when I'm ready to go on. But if it wasn't for the heat, I can definitely crank these packs out. I can have a 300p pack done in, you know, less than an hour at how quickly this goes. So yeah, that's all I wanted to show in this quick video is that this unit definitely works. And if you're looking at buying one, go with the 230. Don't waste your time on the 110. Until then, the next video coming up will be an overview of where I'm at with my Ames inverter. I did have somebody ask, so I may do some load testing on that um, and just show some thermal imaging so you can see how it's performing under super heavy loads. Until then, I'll see you around.